Effects pedals need power to operate. Sometimes this can come from an internal battery, but more often than not, especially with modern digital effects pedals, this will come from an external power supply. To choose the right power supply and figure out which outputs to use on it, we'll need to do some power calculations. One unit we use for measuring power is the watt, named after English industrialist James Watt. But normally we think of watts as measuring things like light bulbs or electrical heaters. We don't normally think of it in terms of effects pedals. So let's do a few quick calculations here and figure out what's the typical sort of range of power that an effects pedal would use. Here are the specifications from the user manual for a Boss DS1 distortion pedal. And we can see from the power supply section that it says it uses 9 volts and the current draw is 45 milliamps. And there's no mention of watts in here, but it's a simple Ohm's law calculation. Watts equals volts times amps. So let's do that calculation. So we'll enter 9 volts and we'll multiply that by 0 0.045 amps or 45 milliamps. And that gives us 0 0.405 watts, 405 milliwatts, a little under half a watt. Okay, great. So we know a uh, Boss DS1 distortion pedal consumes about half a watt. What about something like a larger digital pedal? What about this Strymon timeline, for example? We can see this is also a 9 volt pedal, and the current draw is 300 milliamps. So let's do that calculation. 9 volts, and we'll multiply that by 0 0.3, which is at 300 milliamps. We can see that it's 2.7 watts. Well, that's still pretty small, right? 2.7 watts compared to, say, a 12-watt LED or even a 60-watt incandescent light bulb is still pretty small. But it's more than six times the amount of power that was required for a DS1. Let's keep going. Let's try something larger still. This is a Line 6 HX Effects, which is a multi-effects unit and digital modeling device. And we take a look in the user manual here. But we don't see anything like we saw with the others where it directly tells you the voltage and the current draw. But it, what it does say here is Line 6 recommends using only the supplied DC 3G power supply. So let's take a look at the specs for that. Okay, so here are the specifications for that particular power supply and we can see that the output voltage is 9 volts, so that's the same as the other devices. And the output current is 3 amps. So let's do that calculation. So we'll just multiply 9 volts by our 3 amps, and that of course gives us 27. Now that's interesting because we had 300 milliamps for the Strymon timeline as the recommended power supply, and 3 amps at 9 volts for the um, HX effect. 10 times what was recommended for the Strymon timeline. And then if we extrapolate that out, that's more than 60 times of what is required for the DS1. So we're starting to get up there. That should give us a frame of reference for the sort of power supply that we might need. A few analog pedals will each consume a few tens of milliamps each, but every time we add a medium to large size digital pedal, each one will use five to six times as much power as the analog pedals. And then if we start using modeling and multi-effects units, they can potentially use so much power as to not be compatible with conventional effects pedal power supplies and we'll need some sort of specialty unit at that point. Okay, let's look in some more detail at the voltage and current ratings on power supplies and figure out how we match them up to the individual pedals. We'll use this virtual pedal board to make the connections and understand what the different values mean. The first thing you want to check is the polarity. Polarity may in be indicated by words and letters on the unit itself or in the user manual, or it may use this little graphic. We talked about polarity in the last episode, and you want to make sure that you match it. So make sure to connect a center pin negative pedal to a center pin negative power supply, or vice versa. Polarity adapter cables are available if necessary. Next, we're going to check the voltage. Now most effects pedals are going to be DC and so it will say something like 9 volt DC or 18 volt DC. There are some occasions where you may have an AC powered pedal 
and if so it will be indicated and you'll need to get a power supply that supports AC outputs if you have one of those. In most cases you're going to want to match the voltage exactly. So if your pedal requires 9 volts you should connect it to a 9 volt output. There are some occasions where a pedal may support a range of voltages so it may indicate that it can support 9 through 18 or 12 through 24 or something like that. It should be indicated either on the unit or the manual if that is the case but if not you should make sure to match the voltage exactly. Providing too much voltage to a pedal that's not designed to support it could potentially damage the pedal and the power supply. In some cases, particularly with some distortion and overdrive pedals, you may be able to run the pedal on a slightly reduced voltage, sometimes called SAG. This simulates a discharged battery and sometimes these pedals will have lower headroom and will start to clip earlier if you run them on lower than their rated power and they can sound different under those circumstances. You should only do this if it's indicated that it's supported by that device in the user manual or by the manufacturer. And for digital pedals you certainly don't want to run them at a reduced voltage. So a digital pedal should always be run at the voltage which is indicated in the manual. The current rating on the power supply indicates the maximum current that this particular output will support. So in this case we have four 150 milliamp outputs and one 500 milliamp output. You can run less than that. So for example my first pedal could be a 100 milliamp pedal or a 70 milliamp pedal or a 120 milliamp pedal and all of those will be fine. The maximum that that output can deliver is 150 milliamps. If I plugged in a pedal that was rated at 300 milliamps into the 150 milliamp out, the pedal power supply would not be able to deliver enough power to that device and it probably wouldn't work. So in summary, when connecting a pedal to a power supply output, the polarity should match exactly. The voltage should match exactly in most cases, unless otherwise indicated. And the current should be less than or equal to the maximum indicated, but not more. Okay, that's it for this time. Coming up in future episodes, we're going to cover regulation, isolation, filtering, power supply noise, AC versus DC, all sorts of interesting subjects. Ring the bell if you want to get updated. I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.